I have often publicly stated that I don't fully trust AI and I believe the overuse and overpromises in the field are leading us down the wrong path. So today we're going to run AI generated code and give it full control over my robot arm. Okay, maybe that's not the best idea. <laughs> All jokes aside, with the right prompting and guidance, I do think this could be a very nice solution that can allow you to create some pretty good and simple code, save you a lot of time and make robotics and especially AI powered robotics even more accessible to everyone. So let's see what that's about. I'm Yulia and welcome back to engineering. So that's the current setup for picking something up. What we want to do today is smoothen out the movement. So right now it gets the target that it needs to reach. In this case, the position that is bent over, then the grab, the position back up, and then the release. But rather than giving it targets and letting it get to it, however, we want to control the way that the movement goes and make it a little smoother, a little slower. Uh, and that can be done pretty easily with the code that we have. So we're using the most basic version of the code possible right now, since this was just a prototype, it looks like this. We're giving it the exact angles that it needs to get to, to have an upright position and a bent over position. You can see that each servo pin variable is associated with one of the servo motor joints. So it makes it pretty easy to determine the angle that it should be at. So how do we make this smoother? We could make a function that just iterates through the number of values that it has to go through. So it goes from angle zero all the way to angle 90, for example, with like a few angle increments in between. So that will give it time to adjust to every position that it needs to get to rather than directly having to shoot to the target that we're giving it. However, I'm not going to write all of that myself. Instead, because I actually have a pretty well-defined problem with a predictable solution where I think a lot of people probably already wrote this kind of code before, it must be somewhere on the internet, therefore it probably made its way into the training data of a model. So I think this is the perfect use case to use a code assistant. So I thought if there's users out there who are used to the electronics part and the mechanical parts and the microcontroller side, but are not so familiar to coding, perhaps this could also be a good example for you on how you can get that going. So today we're going to find out if AI can write the code for my robot arm for me, make these movements more controlled and smooth and come up with some more interesting positions that I can program in and make this a bit more functional, a bit more fun, and of course, a lot less work for me. So let's try it out. All right, so we've set up in Visual Studio Code and we've enabled Copilot. Okay, so it seems like it has already kind of figured out that I'm working with a robot arm with MicroPython. I have five servos, I have two functions, and I am controlling the movement. All right, so I'm asking it to help me make a function that makes the movement a little bit smoother if it can understand that the way that the servo motor angles work together means the movement of a file. That was really quick. No, that's kind of crazy, wait. So it made a smooth move function using the pin, the start and end angle with the different steps. And I can define how long it should take or how many steps it should take. I kind of like that. All right, keep, is it in here now? Oh, wow. Well. Okay. Well, I mean, let's just try it. Let's run code that the AI generated for me. What could go wrong? Run on Pico. I mean, that's exactly what I wanted, right? It's just a little bit slow. No, but this is like so fun. Wait. <laughs> make it go faster yeah keep the changes right so now the duration of different movements is like 0 0.4 and i love that it gave me a different movement for the base rotation and it made it even faster when it does the little claw grab which is actually quite smart that's something that i was thinking about as well because it should be a bit slower when we move four servos at once but just a little grab that is an easier move to make well let's try it run dude that's so good <laughs> that was so much better i i don't even know what to say okay let's try it with the little tissue grab again thank you define better angles for the movement 
I want to see how it works with more of a vague instruction because the positions are just something that again I tried out as a first example and I see it changed them slightly I really wonder like how it comes up with those angles and what it bases on better mechanical advantage more stable position but how would it know that it's very interesting so I assume again that this works because there's a lot of these types of code out there that it possibly trained on so I'm going to assume that it's just using the wisdom of my ancestors who have made this project before and it's not actually like intelligent but that is like so much better than the first run okay I like that and now I want to be able to say right because right now I coded it to turn this direction go down up and then bring it back here but I want it to be able to take in different inputs so that I can tell it which way to pick up the tissue from that was from the left and now it picks it up from the right and sends it to the left now let's try something a little bit out of scope can you make a new function to make the arm wave? Okay, that just appeared, okay. So let's see, we have the same smooth movement function that we're using and it's decided on certain angles just for server pin zero. Let's watch you wave. Okay, so it literally just moved the servo pin zero around. Wave with the rotors in the top of the arm wrist as well. Okay, so I wanted to probably also move the other pins, which would be the ones higher up there. Let's see. Not it doing like the princess wave. Wait, <laughs> let's do it together. Hello. Hello, peasants. <laughs> oh my God. That is pretty cute. Now I want to make an extra function for saying yes or no with the server movements. So I would assume that it does like a little clench up and down for a yes. And then the no would probably be just a pin zero movement. So the nod yes, we have the servo pin two going from 90 degrees to 120. So yeah, clenching. And then we have the shake no, which is the servo pin zero rotating 90s and 60s. So again, this looks like what I would think to implement. It's just that it does it a little bit quicker. Am I a good programmer? Are you sure? <laughs> it's really cute though. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Okay, so we've used AI successfully to both smoothen the movement by implementing a function that goes through the different steps at a different speed and makes it look a bit less twitchy. And we've also created a few functions to define a few more types of movements like waving, saying yes, and saying no. And now we can put it all together into a loop that makes it seem a bit more like we're talking to a robot arm. So let's see if it can implement that for us. Make a loop that goes through a few scenarios. All right, so this should put it all together and allow us to run through a few of these interactions and make this a bit of a little fun project. You can see that the AI is thinking about it and it should have all the building blocks needed to put this together. We have all the functions in here, the way that we define the movement, the way that we pick and place, which we were using in our previous example, the waving as well as the shaking and nodding. All we need now is the while loop that contains all of these one after the other. All right, and let's see what we've got. Hello which side is the tissue and I'm going to say right and then you come here and 
drop it. Boom, that is so fun. Oh my goodness. So there you have it. We've used Copilot to generate a few very simple functions for the robot to follow. Could we have implemented these ourselves? Absolutely, it's not the most advanced solution. I will link all the code in a GitHub repo so you can take a look at it. It's not much different than the one that we used when I wrote it myself in the previous example. The hard work, so to say, was assembling the servo motors and assigning them the right variables. And then it's just a matter of saying which angles you should go to, having that slight smoothening function, and then just initiating more of these uh, movement types, like the nodding, the shaking, and the little wave. But this did speed up the process quite a bit since it can just create a few lines of code for you. And I'm curious how far we can take this. Uh, because the code runs on the microcontroller and not on the actual computer, we might be a bit limited. For example, like if we want to run an actual LLM that can answer some questions, I don't know if that can run on the Pico, but it's something to definitely look at or try to recreate this with a bigger microprocessor or like an NVIDIA GPU powered crazy thing and make a pretty advanced robot. But we have the building steps, we have the techniques down, we're iterating through it step by step, hopefully making it as understandable and easy to follow as possible. And um, yeah, I'm really curious to see where this project goes. Let's do one more wave to say goodbye. Run. Goodbye, see you in the next video. Thank you everyone for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, turn on the bell and do all the youtuber -y things so that the algorithm likes me and I can continue to make videos. And we'll see you next time.